I feel like I've been on the East Coast a lot, so welcome back to the West Coast, guys. Welcome back to the vlog. Today we have a brand new day at the West Coast and as you can tell from the title of the video, we're gonna have a fun day out here. Let's get started in this first hole and you know what? Not every day and not every shot is gonna be perfect no matter, matter what you shoot and this is exactly the moment that I knew that this is gonna be a trouble shot. So I'm hitting a 7 iron here in super super thick rough, just trying to advance it as far as I can. Did not make it on the green but advanced it and had about 50 yards left to the pin, hitting a 58 degree wedge here. And hit a decent shot giving myself a putt for par. So we'll definitely take a par after that tee shot left me in such a position. No complaints there. So what I really wanted to talk about today is how to strategize your way around a golf course when you know you are hitting well so that you can score the best that you possibly can. Obviously, this is still early in the round, so I did not know how I was going to be hitting for the day. But I was definitely feeling solid. I've been hitting a few solid shots, even the drive on the first hole was solid. So I definitely knew that I was on the right track. But at this moment in time, just trying to get it on the fairway and on the green. I thought it was going in the water. That's a good outcome. You're dry land at the beach. <laughs> So for this second shot, the pin position today wasn't the easiest, it was in front and just past that bunker. So we definitely know that this early in the morning we do not want to flirt with that bunker at all. If you try to go straight at the pin, you need perfect distance because if you just miss it a little bit, you are definitely going to be plucked in that bunker in front. And it is very easy to get plucked in these bunkers here, so definitely not playing with that direction at all. Good thing is I hit a draw so I'm just pushing it out towards the right side and letting it draw naturally back towards the pin. After that I gave myself this putt over here for birdie. It was about an 18 footer sloping left to right as you can see the water is down on the right side as well so definitely will break more and as you can tell quite a big break but just did not want to give me that so we'll take a par on the second hole. No, Max Next, we'll move on to the third hole, which is a par 5. Teeing off with a 3 wood this morning as it's still very, very wet, as you can tell. So, I'm not thinking that this 3 wood is going to run and reach the bunker. Definitely playing all carry distance, hitting a 3 wood just short of that bunker. And after that shot, just hitting a high rate here for a good layup, giving myself a good distance. Unfortunately, ended up just in the rough, so a little bit of an odd lie here, but it was only 78 yards, hitting a 58 degree wedge, but because of the condition, I was definitely hoping that I had enough club, and it just came out a little bit heavy from the rough, and thankfully just crossed that bunker. Yeah, living on the edge. So had this chip for birdie. Not too bad of a position, got lucky there, was enough to carry that bunker, so just giving myself an uphill chip and a little bit short, but not too bad for a little tapping par. Moving on to hole 4, which is a par 3, 127 yards to the pin. The pin today was tucked behind and there was a big slope in front that you needed to carry just to get up to that same tier. But because I was a little bit in between distance, I decided to go with the shorter club which was the 9 iron instead of the 8 because if you are putting uphill for this hole, it's definitely a lot better than hitting it on that upper tier and bouncing over which is what tends to happen. 
So I ended up with this part here, as you can tell, did not make it past that big slope that I was talking about, but still giving myself an uphill birdie putt. Unfortunately, that was definitely a misread. The heel definitely tripped me. I thought it was going in the opposite direction, so left myself with this four footer for par. So par on the fourth hole, let's move on to the fifth hole, which is a par five. So for this par five, simply just trying to aim actually to that building right in the center sticking out in the clouds amongst the distance there. What a beautiful view this is early in the morning. So hit it pretty much to where I was going. And for my second shot, I actually was close enough to consider going for the green. But because early in the morning, again, three wood for this shot right here is not an easy shot. It's wet. So was the risk worth it? I did not think so, so I just hit a layup there with an 8-iron. For my third shot after the layup, I had 81 yards, which is actually not my favourite distance. I would have loved if it was about 5 yards closer. So I had to hit a really full 58 degree wedge here. And did not hit a bad shot, but just left it a little bit out towards the right side, but it, which is actually not too bad for this hole because I leave myself with an uphill putt. And this was my putt for birdie. And unfortunately, just broke the opposite direction of what I thought was going to happen. So another tap in par on the fifth hole. And now I know why somebody or a few of you guys actually named me the queen of tap in pars because it does happen quite often. So I'm really looking forward to it today that I have less tap in pars and more birdies actually made. But you know, we'll take the tap in pars for now and save the birdies for the competition. Let's move on to hole six, which is a par four. At this point, we are just cruising along with a bunch of pars, so really trying to make a birdie here, hitting it pretty solid, and actually got a pretty good club for this hole. It was 152 yards and I'm hitting a 7 iron here, full 7 iron for sure, making sure that I carry the bunker was my aim, and I thought I had it a little bit short, but it actually ended up perfect, giving me a tap in birdie so definitely love tapping birdies and just like that we're now under par now we're on hole 7 par 4 and normally on this hole i actually hit a three wood to make sure that it's short of those bunkers on the left side because the fairway is actually pretty small you basically have do you see between those two bunkers that's about the fairway that you have but for today hitting my driver good confident why not just whack it since it's wet Conditions are not allowing for much run out and this is this can be a pretty long hole if you do not hit Well, if you don't get run out So you definitely don't want to hit that long of a club into the screen So I decided to go with a driver and hit a good shot down there on the fairway So this is when you can sometimes consider taking risk if it is a hole that you normally would like to lay up But you are feeling confident today. Why not? You know, it's obviously the most important thing is that you need to feel confident in whatever choice you make. It doesn't matter even if you're hitting super good and you feel like laying up. If, if you feel like laying up, then lay up. If you feel like going for it, go for it. If you trust your shot, chances are it's going to be a good result. Always remember that. So here on hole 7, guess what? We got another tap in par. Moving on to hole 8, which is a par 3. So for this par 3, it was 168 yards and the pin was in front on the right. So there is a lot of bunkers, one line with the pin, I mean the same distance because the pin is in front. So you do want to make sure that you get towards the right side of the screen because if you hit anywhere left, there is a big chance you are going in the bunker. So I actually hit a really good shot there and I wasn't sure if I was going to have enough club to carry it all the way there because of how wet it was in the morning but I actually hit a good shot and gave myself a good birdie putt. So this was my putt for birdie. It was about a 15 footer downhill and I definitely thought that if you can see, you can see how place that I'm putting at the where I'm standing. The ball's actually above my feet so I definitely thought that it was going to be a big break right to left but as you can tell it just went straight. So a tricky little putt there but a tapping par on the 8 hole. We have reached the 9 hole, the final hole of this 9. As you can see, lots of water right, 
and obviously for this hole you can really tee off with whatever you want just make sure you hit left and from to for today's tee box and the way i was hitting my driver i knew that i would be good to carry those bunkers on the left i need to hold back on that one <laughs> and after the tee shot left myself with about 118 yards so it was a little bit uphill did not know if my pitching wedge was going to be enough but i knew that my nine was going to be over so hit my pitching wedge and if anything i knew that i would have an uphill putt which is exactly what i had here so i had about an eight footer here for birdie and i thought that it was going to break but then my friend's putt didn't break and then actually my putt broke so that's why we were laughing but you know what it is again a tap in par and we'll take it and move on to the next nine so you're done with nine holes you're shooting a pretty decent score this is probably the part of the round where you start thinking about your score right how often is it do you hear people saying oh i can only play one nine well or once i play the front nine well then i mess up the back nine to be honest i hear that quite often so if this is what you usually say or this is something that you or your friend usually says forward this video to them so what is it that you need to focus on when you're scoring well you know you're hitting well but you know it's just a little mental thing once you start thinking about the score certain things come to your head you know you're trying so hard to make birdies you're trying to shoot maybe the best round maybe you're trying to break your personal best whatever it is it's okay if these thoughts come into your mind. That's the first thing I'm going to say. It's natural. Unless you're really not keeping your score and you really block out what you're shooting. Which, to be honest, it happens to me sometimes. So if you say that that happens to you, I believe it. But unless that's what's happening, it's okay for you to think about the score. I know a lot of people just say like, just don't think about it. It's not the easiest thing for people not to think about score. So instead of trying to ignore it, what can you focus your attention on so that you, even though you know your score, can still perform as well as you know you can? You're obviously hitting it well, so for you to be shooting a good score, right? So what then do you need to focus on so that you do not mess up your score, to say the least? So the first thing I'm going to say is, try to play the way that you have been playing. So if you've been playing aggressively, continue playing aggressively. If you've been playing conservatively, continue playing conservatively. So for this hole, it is 188 yards. The pin is in front. It is quite a bit of carry over that water. So this hybrid, I knew that I would have to hit a good shot. If I missed it, there is a chance that it's going into the water. So I'm actually playing my draw, which is quite odd on a hole like this with the pin tucked right. You would think that you would not want to draw. But because that is my natural shot, instead of trying to go against it, what I'm trying to do is play with it. And also I know that a draw is going to hit further. So if I hit a draw, chances are it's going to be a good distance. Get in the hole! Go in! Go in! Go in! Go in! Oh, go in. oh no! Boom! That's nice birdie. Right in the middle. Oh, Caddy. 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 Alright, another nice birdie in the back, so now let's move on to hole 12. 
and there's nothing wrong with celebrating a birdie. I know sometimes they might think that the more birdies you get, the more pressure you have, but really just change your mindset about it. It's another birdie in the bag, it's another little bonus. So over here, hole 12, hit a good tee shot and this stretch of holes are actually pretty tough because they are pretty long and the approach shots are definitely not easy. So the main goal for holes that are long and difficult doesn't matter if you're trying to score well, if you're trying to score your personal best, or if you're just having a bad day. For this kind of holes, par is a good score. Well, that's for me. So maybe for you, bogey is a good score. Whatever it is, you should know what you're trying to achieve. And the best thing that I find for holes where you have really long approach shots into the green, it really is okay to just aim for the centered yardage and just go for the center of the green. Don't try to be a hero. Not every pin needs to be attacked, especially when you have a long club in your hand. Sometimes you just gotta try to center green it and two putt it and walk away with a par. Hole 13 is another difficult hole because it is uphill, a long hole, so it's entirely carry. So 413 yards uphill is a very very long hole and because the pin is blue today, it is even further than that. So for this hole, although we do not want to think about the hazards or the dangers that there might be, there's actually absolutely nothing on the left side and everything on the right side slopes towards the cart path which would lead you into probably what is going to be a lost ball if you hit it down the right side. So although we do not want to think about hazards, it is good to know what is there because there have been a few times where I've hit a good shot and it ended up bouncing right and into a not good position. So even though you do not want to think about hazards, it is good to know what is out there. As you can see for my second shot, uphill lie. So I know a lot of you guys wanted some tips with regards to hitting on the slopes. That's why I've taken the initiative to try to take my slope shots in slow-mo so that you guys can see. The most important thing really is all about balance. As you can see even here, I'm really, it's, it might look awkward, but really what I'm trying to do in my fall through is still make sure that my weight goes forward and you don't fall back. I feel like a lot of times people fall back and that's why on uphills like this, they tend to miss hit it or even top it. So really on slopes, the most important thing is to try and keep your balance. So after that shot, I was on the green, which is definitely something good from 192 yards on the slope hitting a 5 wood into the green. Really, all I wanted to do is hit the green, which is exactly what I did. So I gave myself a putt for birdie. Although it wasn't very close, it was still a birdie opportunity. And as I've always said, a good tap-in par is never something to complain about. So tap-in par over here and let's move on to the next hole. So next hole is hole 14. So this is the stretch of holes that you can kind of try to take advantage of because they're a little bit shorter as compared to the last few holes. So for this hole, I'm hitting a 3 wood, and really what I want to try to do is, well, number one, make sure that you hit something that is going to be right enough that you don't play with that hazard at all. And then after that, it really comes down to luck and what kind of bounce you get. So for that shot, I hit actually where I wanted to. It just unfortunately got caught in the rough, which usually kicks left and I didn't. So I was caught in this downhill, downslope very very difficult lie and as you can see here it's another slow-mo for you guys and really the same thing maintaining balance again throughout the swing but over here you can also tell I'm aiming pretty far right because when the ball is in this kind of lie you need to anticipate that it's going to draw and it's probably going to be quite a big draw so make sure that you play enough for that make sure that you're aiming right enough especially on a hole like this when there is water down the left side so i hit a really good shot from where i was and i gave myself a putt from the green which was definitely not what i was thinking from with the lie that i had so definitely a bonus for me and sometimes when you get bonuses you also get lucky yes oh perfect oh hit the hole hit the hole hit the hole hit the hole, hit the hole. In. Yeah. In. Yes! <laughs> My god, is that a birdie? Yes. My god! Well done. <laughs> nice, man! Awesome! <laughs> <laughs>
So although there was a big amount of luck with that part, you know, golf is all about luck and luck is about preparation, meeting opportunity, or also sometimes it could just be patience, meeting opportunity. So although you can't always get lucky, sometimes you just got to stick one close and make a birdie that way. So hit a good five iron there and gave myself this four footer for birdie. You know what? Sometimes if you don't trust the line, step back. It doesn't matter how far the putt is. Every putt matters. If you do not trust it, step back. Make sure you trust it and then putt. Yeah. Yes. Buddy. Hole 16 is another short par 4. The most important thing here is definitely getting yourself on the fairway. If, as you can see, lots of water. So play whatever club you need to just to get yourself on this fairway. Because once you're on this fairway, it's a very short hole. So you're definitely approaching with a wedge. So whatever you're most confident with, that's what you should hit. And I hit a 5 foot here. Hit a good shot. Left myself in a good position. I had 101 yards to this pin. This pin was pretty far tucked right and all the way behind and you had to carry a bunch of bunkers here so definitely distance was very very important for this shot. But it was a good thing that it was a perfect distance for me. I hit a 48 degree wedge there and hit a good one and left myself with this 3 footer again for the third buddy in a row. We have reached hole 17 and although this is a short hole, this is definitely a thinking hole because first you need to decide what you need to hit off the tee. For this tee shot, I'm hitting a hybrid because if I do not cross to that left fairway there, I normally hit a hybrid just to lay up. And I hit a good one there, left me in a good position for my second shot. However, because it was very very in between distance for me, it was a front pin, the water was up and you definitely do not want to hit anything short of this pin because it's going to go in the water. So I thought I would be smart and play an 8 iron. But I did not fully commit to it and just tugged it a little bit left. And it took a big bounce from the green into this little rough patch over here. So as you can already tell, not an easy place to chip from. Everything goes downhill towards that water here. But you need to make sure that you get it enough to get it out of that rough and make sure that you do not leave it short. So basically about as good as I could have done from there, but left myself with about an 8 footer for par, which is not ideal. And this was my putt for par, and unfortunately, not a bogey free round, but the first bogey on the card to be on the 17th hole, definitely not too bad. Let's move on to hole 18, which is a par 5. So this par 5 is off a pretty good distance. So for the tee shot, really just trying to get it out there as far as I possibly can. Just making sure that I'm left of those bunkers on the right side because those are actually reachable for me. So hit a good tee shot there and gave myself a position from the fairway, which is exactly what we need for this hole. As you can see, a ton of bunkers up there. But I'm hitting this 3 wood here to actually carry the bunker on the left side because I knew that if I did, I would have a little wedge into the green and not a super long shot like you normally do if you do not carry those bunkers. So as I said, after hitting that layup shot, I only had about 118 yards to the green which is a very very nice distance to have to this pin and to this green because it is not an easy green. And this was my wedge shot. It wasn't a bad shot, I just started it too far left of where I wanted to. So it wasn't as close as I wanted it to be and gave myself this putt for birdie, which unfortunately was just a really slow putt, but definitely nothing to complain about this round. I hope you guys enjoyed this vlog, and I'll see you guys next time in another one.